So guys, welcome back and let's see about this problem regarding a ranking cycle. Okay, so within the drawing that I'm going to do, I'm going to explain our data and the things that we need to get out of this problem. Okay, so let's just start. Remember that a ranking cycle has a big building filled of pipes, okay, where you have the entrance of the heat into the cycle. Okay, so these things that I'm gonna tell you, these things should be known uh, for you at this, at this part of the course, okay? But if you don't, you can actually uh, check them out in a, any textbook. After this steam generator, this is the name for this one, this is steam generator, generator. After that one, I always try to put as the outlet of the steam generator as the state one. So I have the state one and I have data here. This is five megapascals and 450 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's data. After that, I have a machine or a device that I know as a steam turbine. So this thing is a steam turbine, okay? This device, produces power, okay, by taking out the heat, or I mean, I mean the energetic juice out of one and getting that into state two, okay? So that's what I have over there. So after two, I have data here, which is 45 degrees, 45 degrees. And after that, I have something, well, the drawing is a little bit weird, but something, this thing is called the condensator the condenser, condenser, okay? So after this guy, okay, I have state three. What happens in the condenser is that you take out, well, let me just put it. So you take out heat out of that. So in this case, I put L. Okay, so I haven't said this, but maybe you know from textbooks that this H over here means that you get that heat from a high temperature, H for high temperature uh, reservoir, which could be something making combustion. And QL, is that, that L is for low temperature reservoir. So what you are actually doing in this condenser, what most of the times is that you are putting into, I'm just putting here with another color. So it's not part of the cycle per se, okay? But you put into some really uh, some really cold substance, okay, going in and it extracts some of the heat from the steam that came from the state two out of the turbine into the condenser. Okay, so that's what it happened over there. Most of the time it's just cooling water from maybe a lake, from maybe a river, or maybe from a cooling tower or something like that. Well, but th that is the idea, to take out some of the heat. Now, after after stage three, you need to know that this thing is gonna be saturated liquid. This is saturated liquid, okay? The ranking, the ranking cycle, just almost by definition, you need to get out of the condenser saturated liquid. So after that, after that thing, you go into a pump. And what you have at the pump is that, after the pump, you have state four, and the pump, what it does, it just needs to inject some of power, okay, some of this power over here. And you need to do it in order to pressurize again, because from three, you don't have the same pressure that you need at four. And if you don't pressurize it here at four, you cannot put that into the steam generator. The steam generator needs to be at really high pressure. So that's what you're doing over there, okay? So look at it. It's really, really low data. I mean, really, uh, it's not very, uh, the data that you have over here is just one at a one, a state one, and you have one other data here at two and nothing else. Well, this one you should know because this is the way a ranking cycle works, but it's just that, okay? So now, now they are asking you to get the efficiency, the thermal efficiency of the cycle, and also, let's just get, just because they are asking you to get, let's just get the quality at the outlet of the turbine and the pressure. Let's just get the pressure at the outlet of the turbine. 
So let's just go ahead and do it. I'm gonna start with this one. This is my way of doing it, okay? So there are several ways to do it, but let's just start with this. One, let's just go and see what we have at state one. So at one, I have five megapascals and 45 degrees Celsius. Now, I don't need to tell you this because this is just from the first, from the starting point of using steam tables, but you should know that this thing is superheated. So out of that superheated, I will know that I have an H1 enthalpy of 3,317.2, and then you have S1, which equals to 6.8210, okay, 210. Okay, that's, that's what you have over here. Now, let's go to two, and to two, what I have over here, so I only have that T2 equals to 45 degrees Celsius, and nothing else, okay? So you say, you can say yourself, you're stuck, and well, maybe you are. So now, what about three? So at three, I have saturated liquid. Oh my God, I'm doing this in Spanish, liquid saturado. So let me just put it again. So saturated liquid, saturated liquid. And what else? Well, the only other thing that I can know is that in a condenser, the pressure doesn't change because it, it acts like a heat exchanger. A heat exchanger most of the times are isobarical. All this stuff, you should know it beforehand doing a ranking cycle, okay? It's not something that you just learn when you're doing a ranking cycle. It's just something that you have been seeing in open system problems. Now, saturated liquid, P2 equals to P3, and, but actually I cannot know anything because uh, there's not much of a... I don't know the pressure, for example. I know that it's gonna be equal to P2, but I don't know the pressure at two. And for four, what I will use is this H4 equals to H3 plus B3, P4 minus B3, okay? But, well, I don't know if you know this, but the only thing that I know is P4, which equals to P1. P4 equals to P1, why? because again, this thing is a heat exchanger, and heat exchangers are isobarical. So you know this fella, you don't, still don't know about B3, you don't know it, you don't know H3, you haven't got it. And, and P3, hey, what about P3? Well, I know that it's the same one as P2, but I don't know it. So you're kind of lost, okay? So talking about this, you are kind of lost, but <clears throat> maybe you can see this. So since I don't have any other thing in order to work here. I don't have how much is the work or the power. I don't have it. So I don't have how much is the, um, I don't know, another stuff. Maybe do I know the quality outside of the turbine? No, you don't. Oh, maybe I know, I don't know, maybe the, no, you don't know. Therefore, you don't know a, a lot of stuff. So you need to assume something. I'm gonna assume this. So when, when you are assuming that, in that moment, let me just take out this out. At that moment, what you are actually doing is the isentropic case for two, okay? So you're doing the isentropic. This little S over there is to represent this information. So you are going to solve an isentropic process. And how do you know that's the one you have here? Well, first of all, because you don't have data enough here at two, you don't have the real power of the turbine, and you don't have the efficiency of the turbine. Therefore, you're stuck with just the isentropic case, which is not a bad idea. Well, okay, so out of this, out of this, you already know, now you know this one, this is what you know, so you know this stuff. So from here, you can actually do, I'm gonna do it here. Oh my God, uh, you know, I'm really good at putting vertical lines. So from here, from here, let me just try to do it better. I have this T and I have this S. I'm gonna erase it later, but. So you know that at 45 degrees Celsius, that's what you have over there. So let's check how much is your SF and how much is your SG and see where this information, which equals to 6.821 fits, whether it's maybe to the left, maybe it's to the right and you are within the saturation curve, maybe you are at the right of here when, when you're superheated. So you don't know, these ones are the limits of those values, so you will know that later. So if you do that, if you do that, you will get into a, um, you will get here, okay? So with this data, two S actually, 
wet steam. This thing is wet steam. And you can calculate the, um, you can actually calculate the quality. So the quality X2S, the two is because it's at the outside of the uh, turbine and the S is because the is the isentropic case. You can get it if you put the 6.8210 minus the SF, which I have it over here, which is 0.6386. This number comes from the sat entropy of saturated liquid at the conditions of 45 degrees Celsius, okay? These ones are gonna be from there. Okay, okay, so, and then the SFG, which is 7.5247. Okay, so with this information, you have yourself that X to S equals, equals to 0 0.82.8216. Okay, so whether you like it or not, you have yourself this one. Okay, good for me. I already know that. And here, you will, you will be able to get right away also the pressure. How so? Well, you knew you were wet steam, right? You calculated the, the quality, fine. And then what? Well, if you are wet steam and you know the temperature, then you know that P2 equals to P sat saturated pressure at the conditions of the temperature that you have over there. Okay, so this one, so therefore P2 equals to 9.59, yeah, yeah, 9.59 kilopascals. That's what you have going out of the turbine. That's the pressure out of the turbine and into the condenser and outside the condenser too actually into the inlet of the pump. Well, okay, so you have that information there. Now, the only thing that we're missing here is to get the, um, is to get um, uh, uh, this one. This one is the only one that we are still, um, we don't have. Okay, so what are we going to do here? What are we going to do is to get the, uh, these three. So again, let me just write H3. Uh, it's gonna be saturated liquid, yeah, saturated liquid, just because of the ranking. Then P2, which I already know, it's 9.59 kilopascals, fine. And with this, I will get that H3 equals to HF, saturated liquid, at the conditions of P2. So I go to the steam tables and we'll see that H3 actually equals to, I have it over here and this is, a 188.44 kilojoules per kilograms. Good. And after that, I need to get the specific volume. Why? I'm gonna need it at four. Oh, okay. So this thing is 0 0.001010. Cubic meters per kilogram. Got it. Good. Now, why are you doing all that? Because otherwise I cannot get myself the efficiency or thermal efficiency of the cycle. Now, let's just go to four. So I'm putting four over here. I'm just repeating myself, but nonetheless, that's how I do it. H4 equals to this H3, got it, plus B3, got it, times a difference of pressure, which is B4. Okay, B4 is oops, 5,000 minus, this guy needs to be 5,000, and then 9.59. Kilopascal. Well, let me just arrange this a little bit. So 5,000, I have it over there. So you have everything set. Therefore, H4, I'm just going to put it here as 193.48 kilojoules per kilogram. Well, okay, so everything is set. Really? Yep. So here, let's just go here. So the efficiency of the cycle equals, equals what? Well, it equals the power, the net power of the, si of the plant, of the power plant or the cycle, divided by whatever gets in as heat. So you can get it over here, M, that you don't know, but you don't care. Um, divided, uh, multiply by the one of the turbine, which is 
H1 minus H2S, okay, plus, plus, I'm an idiot. I'm gonna uh, take that back. And then this is H4 minus H3, got it. And then, whoops, M H1 minus H4. There's a mistake there. And now there's not a mistake there. I think I have done that correctly. So this one is from the turbine. And this one is from the pump. And below is because of the steam generator. Okay, so therefore I can write for this fellow over here. The M just goes away because it's common factor. And I only have enthalpies and I know all of them. So this is the... Actually, this is a deal for ranking cycles to get all the enthalpies. Once you know all the enthalpies, it's pretty easy to solve this. H1 minus H4. So, pim, pum, pim, pum, pim, pum. So, you got it. And therefore, this is what I got myself. This is 0 0.37.03. There you go you have yourself a nice, ideal, simple ranking cycle. If it wasn't ideal, then your turbine or your pump will have an efficiency and they will be real. So in that case, this, this guy stops, uh, stops being ideal and just becomes a real power cycle called a ranking cycle. And what else could happen? Well, there are some other, uh, some other um, variations you can have for the ranking cycle, which is the uh, um, regeneration and reheating. Okay, but those things are one thing that we will look for later. Okay, so see you guys.